These hiking boots are the best sellers on Amazon right now with thousands of five star and four star reviews. They are the Nortif 8 version 1 from Armadillo and I want to see what this hike is all about. Hi everyone, this is Andrea with Adventures and Dreams and I'm bringing you another gear review today, this time of these hiking boots that Armadillo was kind enough to send to me. These Nortif 8 version 1 really are rocking Amazon right now, they have thousands and thousands of reviews. So I want to see if they really are what the reviews tell. Uh, they are very positive overall, so we'll see if I can confirm that for you guys. I'm going to test them thoroughly on this five-day backpacking trip through all sorts of terrain, through rivers and steep slopes and rocky areas and mud. <laughs> so we'll make sure they really work well and they're worth all the hype that they have right now. Before heading out on my multi-day backpacking trip, I had to get some fresh water from this creek here. This was the first test for these hiking boots because I had to scramble down these rocks and mossy areas. But the traction was top and I made it safely down to the creek to filter my water. After a quick breakfast, I packed everything up and my journey began to make it up to the mountains. It was a steady incline with roots and rocks along the way, but I never slipped once with these hiking boots. The Nordif 8 is supposed to be waterproof and this here was my first test as the creek ran right on the hiking path. It was the first of many of those encounters, but my feet never got wet. Another tough challenge came when I needed more water from the creek below and I had to scramble down this area without a path with roots and brush and all sorts of things along the way. The exceptional traction prevented me from sliding down this hill and the boots protected me from branches and rocks. My first day of hiking was almost over as I was making my way up this meadow to my first campsite. This is the first time that I ever tried these hiking boots, but I didn't get any blisters or other sore areas. On the next day, I had quite a bit of elevation gain and miles left to make it to my next camp. I packed everything up quickly and started back on the path to my next section. This part of the path proved even more challenging, but by now I had faith in these hiking boots and I knew they would keep me dry and safe from sliding. Even areas like this with wet rocks and slanted logs were no problem for these hiking boots. It sure is a nice feeling when you step on something and you feel like you are not going to slide off of the surface. What I also loved about situations like this one here is that the hiking boots have a great range of motion, so it feels very natural to step over things while the ankle high boots offered a great protection. This trip really offered me a great range of situations where I could test these boots, including mud and strange bridges that were half broken. Later on that day, a thunderstorm rolled in with some rain but by now I already knew that the hiking boots would keep me dry, no matter what the situation is. This was by far the greatest test for the waterproofness of these hiking boots though. A pretty deep creek went right over the hiking path and there was no way around it but to go right through the water to get to the other side. But I never got any wet feet. After that, I had to step on a pretty slippery and mossy slanted area to make it to the other side to my path. But again, I never slid and I never felt unsafe with these hiking boots, which made me quite happy because this would have been pretty bad if I had fallen here with my heavy backpack. After some more mud, I was finally in the clear and I could continue my path. It was a strenuous hike 
but I finally made it to my second camp and relaxed for the rest of the day. Before we begin the next part of our hike, let's look at some of the features that these hiking boots have. These hiking boots are considered mid-cut, which protects the ankles from brushing against rocks and roots, but it still gives you quite the flexibility when you hike. They use a waterproof synthetic material and are super lightweight. Like all hiking boots, these also have a protective toe cap. The heels are also protected pretty well and the boots come with a pretty decent crampon belt, which actually works pretty well with the micro spikes that I have. These micro spikes fit quite securely, just in case I ever come into a situation where I need them on ice or snow. I've already been pretty impressed with the traction of these hiking boots, and this is due to their rubber soles. The Nordif 8 version 1 have a pretty decent cushioning around the ankle, but I think they improved upon it in version 2. The same is true for the cushioning of the inner soles, which could be a little bit better here in this version 1. It's pretty easy to put on these hiking boots because the opening is pretty big and the foot slips right in. The strings pull quite easily and then you can secure them with two hooks at the top of the ankle to adjust the tightness that you want. I didn't pull them too tight because I rather have the flexibility of my foot than having them tight in my shoe. Let's look at it again from the front. The foot slips in quite easily and then you can tighten them however you want, whatever your comfort level is around the ankle. I always use a double bow because it keeps the strings from opening up while you hike. This is true for all the hiking boots that I've ever had and it's the same for these as well. We explored quite a few features already of these hiking shoes, but there's going to be more in the next camp as I arrive. At this point, I hiked perhaps 10 miles with my heavy backpack. Most evenings were pretty cool, but the hiking boots kept me nice and warm. There is nothing like an evening out camping with a campfire and some snacks. I had to get some more water for filtering and this time I walked through some swampy areas, but without a problem with these shoes. At this point, I trusted the Nord of 8 in any situation. But let's look at some more aspects of these hiking shoes while we wait here in this next camp. We looked at the soles earlier in this video already, but I really wanted to try the traction on different terrain. This rock was fairly steep, but I had no problems walking up it. I'm a rock climber since 2004, and having a good grip on rock is so important for me, but these shoes didn't disappoint at all. I could go up and down the slopey rock without a problem, and I even tried it sideways, which also worked quite well. At first, there was a little bit of a pinch in the toe area when I kneeled down like this, but the shoes seemed to soften after an hour or two and then I didn't notice it anymore. One of my favorite aspects of these ankle high boots is the range of motion. It feels very natural and not restricting at all when hiking. It's time to prepare myself to hike back down to the trailhead and we're going to go through all of the elements again that we already went through on the way up here. But by now I know that the Nord of 8 can handle any situation. We covered quite the variety of ground. We had sandy paths, kind of rocky paths and really rocky paths. There was plenty of mud and very uneven ground. But the highlight was when we walked right through the creek. I was so happy that these hiking boots held their promise of being 100% waterproof. We also walked through some muddy and marshy areas without a problem. And don't forget the steep and overgrown hill at the beginning of our journey, 
which was quite a test, but the shoes work perfectly. So let's look at the pros and cons of these hiking boots. I love the range of motion that they have and it feels really natural to walk in all sorts of terrain. One of my favorite aspects is also the excellent traction, which we explored quite a bit on this trip. The ankle high boots, the toe cap and the heel area also offer a great protection. The boots are very lightweight, which makes them quite comfortable on long hikes. As we saw in several examples, the boots are quite waterproof and I had no problems going through creeks with them. They are the number one bestseller on Amazon for a reason, because the quality is top and so is the price. But I want to give you an honest review and like every product, these boots also have their cons. The cushioning of the inner sole and around the ankle could be a little bit better. I think they did improve on that in the version 2 and I would love to try these at some point. I also mentioned earlier in the video that the area around the toe pinches a little bit when you kneel down. The slight discomfort in the toe area and around the ankle got better after wearing the boots for a couple of hours. These hiking boots worked out quite well on this backpacking trip and you saw me use them in all sorts of situations like up a steep hill, through mud and through water. They honestly exceeded my expectations and I highly recommend them to you guys, but not in all situations. If you're going on day hikes that are easy to intermediate, they are definitely perfect for them. You will just have a day pack with you and you can hike with these shoes all day long with a lot of comfort and security. They would also work really well for hunting and fishing or any kind of outdoor activity where you don't have a lot of gear with you. They would be perfect for canoe camping trips, kayak trips, car camping trips and things like that. As for backpacking, I would recommend them for shorter trips where you don't have a lot of backpacking gear. For anything that is a little bit more strenuous, like mountaineering or really difficult day hikes, I would recommend getting shoes that are a little bit more protective around the ankles and the sole, just for all day comfort when you're in these strenuous situations. And the same is true for backpacking as well. If you're going on a multi-day trip, like the Appalachian Trail or the Pacific Crest Trail, for instance, I would recommend getting shoes that are more comfortable where you can hike around all day long with them especially when you have a heavy backpack. So for most situations, I really recommend them to you guys. It's just those difficult hikes or backpacking trips where they might not be ideal for you. That's it for my gear review for today and I hope it helped you a little bit. If you are thinking about buying these shoes, I have the links down below in the description and also in the comments for both the version one, which you saw on this trip but also the version 2, which is an updated version with the cushioning just a little bit more advanced. So that might be something to look into, but I haven't been able to test those yet, so maybe in the future. Take care, my friends, and I hope to see you in my next adventure or in my next gear review, which I have lots and lots of them on my channel, by the way, if you want to check them out. Just follow the link below and you will find a lot of camping gear reviews on my channel. Take care guys and I see you soon.